Hi everyone, welcome to HubShots episode 297. In this episode, we talk about everything fatigue, AI tools, HubSpot list tips, sending emails to more contacts, and the difference between a last activity date versus the last modified date. Now you're listening to the number one HubSpot focus podcast where we discuss HubSpot tips, tricks, and strategies for growing your sales, marketing, service, and operations results using HubSpot. My name is Ian Jacob from Search and Be Found, and with me is Craig Belly from Zen Systems. How are you, Craig? Really well, although probably exhausted and fatigued like many people. It's a tough time, isn't it? And so tell me, Craig, what is, why is everything fatigue the thought of the week? Look, I just thought I'd put this. We're, we're seeing the word fatigue everywhere, and I totally get it. People are exhausted, pushed to the limits, but everyone's heard of subscription fatigue, too much Netflix, too many subscription channels. But look, we're seeing that whole kind of fatigue flow over to marketing fatigue, content fatigue, AI fatigue. I mean, if you've just been so many AI tools released, we're going to chat about that in a second. Community fatigue, which is a topic we're going to talk about in a few, uh, future episode. And then just even jargon fatigue. People are just, just don't give me all this jargon. Just tell it to me straight. So I think there's fatigue all round. And actually, it's going to play into our main thought of the week, really, around business challenges that are happening. And uh, yeah, I, so if you're feeling exhausted, people, you're in good company. I hear you. All right. Now we say business is tough and send more emails. Why are we saying this, Craig? I think it's easy to forget some of the tried and true channels. So uh, business is tough. I I think this is worth recognizing, not in all industries. I mean, if you're in the building sector, you you can't get anyone to build, you know, or you're in solar or renewable energy or something like that. They're really busy. But in other sectors, there uh, there's business challenges. People talk about a downturn and all of this. I mean, we don't want to get too caught up in newspaper headlines. But in these times, people often almost go into paralysis and wondering what to do. And so this is just a reminder. I'm not a business coach, uh, but I am a HubSpot. Well, we're both HubSpot coaches, but we deal with clients' portals. And quite often, email is just underused. Yeah. And so I've got an example here if you if you get the show notes or you're watching on YouTube. This is just a screenshot from our portal. We're using around 15% of our email send capacity. And what this means, and we're going through our clients' portals, they're like, just send more email. Not, not broadcast irrelevant spam, but relevant emails, quality, just do more of it because it is essentially free in a way uh, compared to, say, paid advertising. You've, if you've got a big extensive database, you should be using it. So what we're doing, I thought I'd talk about what we're doing ourselves as a, a business. We're reviewing all our automations, our emails. We want to send more email, but we want to check the email that we're sending is actually relevant. A lot of the stuff we've got is part of workflows, nurture sequences that we wrote years ago in some cases, it was probably not appropriate now. You know, we're going from a time of aspirational uh, business growth to much more oh, um, survival in some businesses and pairing back and just the high priority items. So what's the takeaway? It's really send more email, but make sure it's relevant. And look, we talk about relevancy versus frequency a lot, don't we, Ian? That's right. So I think the big thing here is making sure your content is relevant, right? And relevancy trumps, fr- trumps frequency because people will happily receive an email. Like they might not read it, but if it adds value, they will keep it in their inbox. And I've spoken to lots of people that have mentioned that they file it away and then when they go back and they have a look at stuff. But it's just being front of mind. And another thing today that, Craig, as we were, I was talking to a customer of ours, they're in the building industry. Things have been, they ha- it has been slow oh, really? um, with changing interest rates and so on. Mm. And one thing that they're doing, being very positively focused is, oh, they're using this time to clean up HubSpot. They're using it to go over the old deals. They're using it to how, how we treat contacts because they've kind of moved from a project builder to a custom builder. So they're using this time that they have to actually set themselves up for growth as we go through this little lull. And so it was really nice to hear that like they're not looking at it as a negative, but they're going, hey, we've got this time. 
What can we do to make it better? How can we improve it? Tell us how to make this better. What We looked at properties. We looked at emails that are going out. We looked at personas. It was really nice. It was just like, you just got to have that headspace and mentality that how do I make this better and get through to the other side. So I think that's a really good example of high value use of time. Uh, I don't want this first segment to be people take away going, oh, wow, they just said send more email, big deal. Tell me something I didn't know. It's actually thinking it through. And so in your client's case, it's a matter of, yeah, segmenting the database so that they can send an email that is a lot more relevant and send more of them to those uh, customers. And also I'd want to say with that, one of the things that we discovered um, was that most builders often will say, oh, yeah, here's a new house or here's... And what they've started doing and getting really good engagement with is sending slightly different information that's related to the building industry. So helping Mm -hmm. people understand changes that are happening, things that are happening with energy efficiency, which a lot of, I never see any other people talk about. So it's been, and they've had really good engagement. So they kind of took that, they've, they've replicated on social and they've done a few things and it just made us really understand that there was something much bigger and a lot wider that they could apply this to. So encourage people to think about what are the things that are affecting us and how do we educate people about it? That's a really good example. I'll actually mention a a similar example. We work with a lot of solar dealers, solar installers, and the obvious pain point is rising energy costs. So you don't need to send an email out to your database saying, oh, do you realize that power bills are increasing? Oh, by the way, here's a special on our latest solar system, right? You don't need to do that. Actually, all you need to do is educate them on, well, here's a rebate that's coming in from the government because it's different. In, in Australia, there's different states. They have different schemes for um, incentives for solar. So it's about providing very valuable information about rebates. Oh, we wait here or this is ending or do this or take advantage of this. So it's much more an educational piece because everyone's got the pain point. You don't need to create pain. People want to solve the pain, but they're looking for a provider that provides information and education to solve that the best. So I think you're absolutely right. And that comes back to segmentation as well, because quite often we're seeing, just to take that solar dealer example, a lot of people have existing systems and they're like, well, can we get more out of our existing yeah. system? Do we add on to it, you know, heat pump, et cetera, things like that. So just providing value around that, uh, is a very Beneficial. successful approach at the moment, yeah. All right, on to our quick shots of the week. And here are a few that we've noticed and of interest. HubSpot has a new AI offering, and so this is there's a content assistant and uh, a create AI-powered content all in the one place. And then there's also ChatSpot to get tasks done faster with AI-powered chat-based commands. So they're the two things. There are videos that Damesh and HubSpot have put out, so well worth. And that's actually built on GPT-4 for our listeners. You know, can I just talk about this? Because that's all in beta. Yes. And uh, we sometimes mention betas if it's a public beta, but, you know, this one's a, that content assistance, a private beta. So I've actually asked HubSpot, are we allowed to talk about it on the show? Because HubSpot's talking about it on their website and okay. they've even released a YouTube video about it, but it's a private beta. So can we talk it? Because we've got a whole video and thing. We'd love to talk about it. We're using it. It's like, I don't know. I don't know if we can even talk about it. So I don't know what the rules are these days. I'd love to chat about it. So at some point that'll go to public beta. We'll talk about it. It's an excellent, uh, the content assistant and it's an excellent tool in HubSpot. Also, you've got noticed uh, you can upload images to products in the product library. Minor because tweak there, yeah. Previously, you had to put the URL, the exact URL. And um, HubSpot is still releasing bewildering ads. On the Have you huge. seen these ads? I don't understand why they're doing it. What am I missing You mean here? we moved away from Pirates, Craig? What are we on to I think it's gone Western or something, a saloon, and they're still Oh, we're still on ones. the Wild West. Yeah, I'd, what is going on? I'd, what am I missing? I, maybe it's an in-joke in the US or something. Like Maybe it means something. I just don't understand yeah. it, but... Um, Anyway, yeah. if you're looking for a bit of entertainment, you can go and look at those uh, YouTube. You can reply to the show notes. Tell me what I'm missing, folks. Yeah. All right. And here are some things not directly related to HubSpot, but realistically, it's going to impact every area of business. And just so you're aware of what's going on, I'm just going through a few to start off with GPT-4, like I mentioned before. 
Mid Journey 5, and that's to do with image creation. Adobe Firefly Beta, Craig. So that's to do with uh, Adobe's AI with creating images, right? Again, or image, yeah, generative images in uh, Photoshop, yep. Yep, and I think Bing Image creates image creators a bit, um, not quite like that, is it? Uh, it's uh, it's actually quite good. It's kind of um, like Mid Journey. It's you just chat and give it a, a prompt, and it'll create an image for you. Yeah. Yep. Google Bard. That's their um, Bing Chat, uh, so Search Chat uh, version, which has been getting underwhelming response. I have to say. And then, of course, we've got Bill Gates and the note of the age of AI. So. Yeah, worth a read because I I'm always interested in his perspectives. But look, the the point of this is by the time you're listening to this show, dear listener or dear viewer, this is probably way out of date. It's changing so rapidly. So that's why at the start we said, you know, there's this kind of AI fatigue. How do I keep up? Here's the point I wanted to make. I think this is an exciting time to be alive. I haven't seen this kind of uh, rapidness of change. I don't think I've seen that ever. Something changing so rapidly where you start working with a tool and then the next week it is significantly better. Yeah. Uh, so exciting time to be alive. The other thing is if you haven't yet started on this, uh, you're only a couple of months behind. It's not too late. Get up to speed. A lot of this will be table stakes, but take advantage of it now. It's definitely worth it. Um, we have a few videos on on the channel we're putting out. So just their beginner stuff. If you're already using it, these videos won't be for you. But if you're totally... And, and actually, it's worth saying, Ian, I don't know if you found this with your clients, but they tend to be in two camps. So some some of our clients will say, oh, have you looked at ChatGPT yet? And they go, yeah, of course I have. What? Of course. Yeah. They look at me as a, this is a stupid question. And then other clients say, oh, so you're using ChatGPT. And they're like, oh, I've heard of it. I keep seeing it in the news. What? What is it? So two very distinctive camps. And so it's easy to have your own kind of biases or think, oh, of course everyone's using it. And then we're going to create videos for those people who have been so busy. They haven't had a chance to at least even start. And with ChatGPT, MidJourney and a few things like that, which of course you and I have both been using in our businesses for months now and as just part of every process really so yeah get on board all right on to our hubspot marketing feature of the week creating a random list sample in hubspot and this relates to stage three of the hub shots framework so this is a really handy feature it gives you ability to create a random sample from your list and you're able to actually select the sample size once you select that option under the actions menu you can actually say how many contacts you want to see in that and it'll give you a percentage of contact in there as well. So a great way if you're wanting to test something out. Now, you you did a test with something to do with this, did you not, Craig? Well, actually, one of our clients, I wish I'd had this available a couple of weeks ago, they said, can you create uh, a sample? We we just wanted to get three or 4,000 people from their list. I think they had hundreds of thousands of contacts in their database. We just want to get a sample that we're going to offer a special market research survey that they work with. Can you just give me a sample of 3,000 people? And we're like, oh, yeah, I guess so. How do we do that? So we were creating this active list with criteria to try and whittle it down. Oh, I use create date here and some other parameters to get it down. And it was kind of just a bit, a bit of whack-a-mole trying to get this list. Wish we'd had this because I just wanted a random sample. Bang, I just would have said, oh, 3,000. Creates a static list for you. Would have been fantastic. So... Thanks, HubSpot. It's the little things, but this will be really handy. Now we're going to talk about um, using multivariate CTAs on our site and some of the results. And so this is in stage four of the HubShots framework. And so with this, um, oh, and this is actually on the Zen site, um, testing a variation. So we've got four variations of the CTA. First one is... Uh, all in capitals says so talk to an advisor. Variation B is talk to a strategist. Variation C is talk to a specialist. And variation D is actually the same as variation A, but in uh, upper and lower case. So not all uppercase. And what is interesting is, is that we want to see what, what's performing, right? So HubSpot's going to... Um, show these equally and then we can measure the click and the submission rate so what we want you to do is to 
pause this and go and see if you're testing any CTAs. And if you're not, go and create a test. And it can be as simple as what we have just demonstrated here. But what did you want to say about it, Craig? Well, the summary so far, we've had it a month or so on the site. I wanted to check whether the, t- the person that you're talking with, whether an advisor or a strategist or specialist, had any impact on whether people click the button. Early indication is very little impact. I mean, something is one of them did work a little bit better than others, but it's not significant. It's, it's, well, it's not statistically significant, but that's good to know. Whereas if one of them had been a clear winner, that would have been something we doubled down on. The really good thing about HubSpot CTA is this is a multivariate CTA. So I know a lot of people have buttons that's a CTA, but they don't check variations. It's so easy to add. Okay. My takeaway is just try some variations, leave it for a couple of months. That's what I'm going to do. And then come back and see if that gets any statistically more confident. Um, but the key thing is also the submissions. If you look at the submission, we've only had 10 submissions so far based on actions based on this CTA. So it's so small. The numbers are so small, they're kind of meaningless because... All it needs is one of them to have a, two extra submissions and it totally changes the submission rate. So you need larger numbers, but the takeaway is just start your testing, forget about it for a couple of months and then come back and measure. I think we should be doing this on a, on a ton of things throughout the site. CTAs is such an easy one to do. Um, the great thing I really like, because we use the CTA throughout the page. So one of the things that's really good about multivariate is let's say you've got the button up in the, the header and then it's throughout the page in various places, the variation will be the same all the way throughout the page. So you've got one clear CTA on the page, one CTA message. So it's not kind of oh, four variations appearing on the one page at one time. I really like that. I think the, the HubSpot CTAs are smart. They'll just do it. I mean, you can go to another page and it might flip it out. But then everything on the page is consistent. So it's really good. No downside of using multivariates. Get into it, start testing, and then come back and make informed decisions. That's right. can make a big difference to your results. All right, on to our HubSpot sales feature of the week. And this is building lists based on email subject lines if emails are logged against a contact. Now, this may seem complicated, but this is in stage three of the HubShots framework. And Craig, tell us why we're going to want to do this. I'll tell you how this came up. A client has, uh, this is when you're logging emails against a contact, but say from Outlook or in their case, actually from another system, it was BCCing into HubSpot. So it's not a marketing email that's sent from HubSpot because they're easy to um, use in criteria and filter, but it was emails getting logged against a contact. And so what the sales reps wanted is, look, can you just give me a list of all those contacts that have had that email logged against them that, you know, someone sent from Outlook or here and things like that. It's like, yeah, sure. How do you do it? Well, there's this really nice criteria when you build a list called associated CRM activities. And you can go into activity properties. If you get the show notes, uh, you can get all these screenshots or else watch it on YouTube. And then activity properties, you can then go in and say, give me email subject and basically pull uh, a list of all the contacts that have got that associated. So that's really valuable. And you might say, oh, so does that mean sales reps need to use a list? Well, no, because once you've got the list, an active list created, then you can go into your view, which is normally how sales reps are viewing their contacts, and you can use the list membership filter on a view. So, yeah, create the list first and then go into your view and create list membership, and there you go. So that the sales reps are, oh, great, I've got all the contacts that have had this email maybe over the last year. I can go start calling them and things like that. So that's all about segmentation. And we love lists, don't we, Ian? We do, Craig. And we actually even had a whole episode about lists, which if you really want to do a deep dive, is available. And there'll be a link in the show notes to that. All right, on to our HubSpot service feature of the week. And it's a last... Uh, so this is where we talk about the last activity date versus the last modified date. And this can be, why we want to highlight this distinction is because we had a customer where we built a workflow that was triggering off the last activity date. So let me just tell you exactly what the last activity date and what the last modified date is. So the last activity date is the last time a note, a chat conversation, a call, an email, a meeting, a message or a task was logged 
for that object. Example, a deal or a ticket, and it's automatically updated by HubSpot. Now, the last modified date is the most recent date that the property on a deal was updated. So this could, and this is also updated automatically by HubSpot. And this could be, this, this does include all of the previous actions we talked to in the last activity, plus other things. So just be aware of that. And can be very important when triggering workflows. Often we trigger workflows based on last activity um, gaps. So, you know, when our last activity was more than 14 days ago, but recently been switching to use the last modified because we found that users were actually changing a record, like moving it into a pipeline stage or a, or a ticket stage. And this wasn't affecting the activity, whereas the most the last modified date does it does do that. That's exactly right. Yeah, the reps were actually changing it. They were working it, and they were just moving the pipeline stage. Didn't actually count as activity. Correct. Which I think is actually fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And by the way, those dates are on most objects, deals, tickets, etc. I notice in the show notes, I've just got to tweak this. We'll do that before it gets sent out via email. But we just mentioned deals. This actually related to tickets in this Correct. particular case. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Now on to our HubSpot gotcha of the week, Craig. HubSpot meetings, shortest schedule window is two weeks. And this is a part of stage three of our HubShots framework. Now tell us more, Craig, why this was the gotcha. Yeah. So this is when you're using HubSpot meetings. Great tool with meetings, as most people probably know, is a HubSpot tool, links to your calendar, and it makes your calendar available. So you can embed this on a web page and people can book in directly and that'll sync back to your calendar. Our client was, they wanted their calendar availability to be limited to the next two to three days. So if you want to book in a meeting with me, you've got to do it in the next two or three days. Their reasoning being, and I think they're correct, they're in a very competitive industry and they were saying, we don't want to give people an option to book in at the end of next week, two weeks time, because by then they've probably already gone with another provider. So we only want to make meetings available for the next two, well, two days, two to three days at the most. And so we're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. So let's go into HubSpot. Can you do it? Oh no, the period is really just this week and next week. So the minimum you can do is two weeks. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Like, oh, I looked up the community forums on this you can use custom date range but then they've got to go in every day and tweak it and okay. change it to make it oh the custom date range is today tomorrow and they're like no that's ain't got no time for that kind of thing so do you know what they did ian they used calendly craig they went with calendly went with another product yeah so i'm hoping that hubspot fixes that. that's why i've got it as a gotcha it's like oh yeah got me so I think that should be an easy fix i, I wish they had said over a period of rolling days mm, rather than correct. weeks um, I'd love to see that as an option on HubSpot meetings. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. There's lots of people talking about it on a community thread. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, just be aware of that. So is there a, is there actually a, a thread for There's a, a community request? thread on it, but no response about whether – it certainly doesn't seem to be planned for action anytime soon. Gotcha. So yeah, folks, if that's interest to you, go and vote up the community thread. Maybe that'll make an impact. That's right. Go leave a comment on it. All right. Inside of the week, HubSpot keeps your data intact even if you cancel. And I think I could liken this to Netflix, right, Craig? Yeah, as, that's right. As you were ex- describing that when you when you cancel your Netflix, it stores everything. So yeah, if what, you resubscribe I, I, and go back. I didn't realize there. this. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, I've got all these watch lists and uh, you know lists I've created in Netflix. What happens if I uh, cancel for a couple of months? And they're like, oh, no. Once you resubscribe, it's all there. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Whereas other services, no, nah, your account's gone. And then I was, uh, you were chatting with me about, well, you know, HubSpot's like that. You downgrade, say you're on a paid subscription to free. They keep all your object data. By objects, we mean contacts, companies, tickets, yes. stuff. They don't necessarily keep all your assets. For example, CMS Hub, yeah. if you cancel that, they wouldn't keep your web pages. But all the object data is there. I was like, that's really cool. So you go down to free for various reasons and later you resubscribe back up to paid, bang. All your data's there. Maybe some functionality about how you view it's not there. You kind of have custom sections and stuff in free, but it's all there. I thought that's really cool. You know, well done, HubSpot. Um, Now, there is one caveat to this, isn't it, Craig? 
Well, the caveat is if you don't use your account at all, I think they do have a... They do. Well, I don't know what that is. Is it 30 days, 90 yeah, days? Yeah, I think if it's a month even... because I often get notifications saying there's been no activity for over 30 days and then the account they will just go delete into deletion. It. Yeah. Yeah. We, and which is fair enough as well, I guess. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's about keeping things clean, right? Why, why clog up the system when you don't have to? Now, Craig, for no good reason, you've added some pictures of quokkas that you've uh, generated from Mid Journey version five. Yeah, we, we've all been going crazy with Mid Journey lately, lately creating images. Uh, and I'll talk about this in a second la- later in the show. We're never using stock images again, creating everything. But yeah, quokkas are an incredibly cute animal native to Australia, actually a small part of Australia. So put some images there in the show notes. Knock yourself out and look at those. So yeah, listeners in who are not in Australia and you want to go see what a quokka is, have a, They're pretty you should cute, be right? subscribing to the show notes and, you should, and you'll get a picture of a quokka. Hubshots.com slash subscribe. Make sure you sign up. Okay, on to our listener question of the week. How to send an email campaign to additional contacts. Now, this is in stage three of the Hubshots framework. And this is a common scenario, isn't it, Craig? You've set up a regular email. You've sent it to your list. The next day you realize, oh, I need to send it to a few more people. Or your boss tells you, oh, I forgot to send it to these people. Can you send that? And you think, oh. And this might be the train of thought of most people. Oh, I need to now go and clone that email, create a new list of the people I need to send it to, and then send it. But, alas, well, you have another option because actually if you go into the actions menu from where the email that you've sent, you can actually choose an option of send to more from the actions menu. And then you can choose a list or you can choose individual contacts. And this is often a great way to quickly get that off and not have to worry about recreating or cloning another email. So there you go. Now, you want to say a few things, right? What, are the, what, what notes have you got here, Craig? Oh, well, just that, look, it only works with regular emails. It won't work with automated or AB testing emails, unfortunately. Um, and also, it won't send to a contact a second time. So let's say you've sent someone an email. I say, oh, I accidentally deleted it. Can you send me again? This won't work for that case. Uh, if you want to do that, that's probably when we talk about, well, make an automation email, have a workflow, resubscribe them to the workflow. Um, or send them, if it's just one person, we often just do, oh, I'll send you as a test email. <laughs> that's a way to get around it. But for that regular case, it comes up so often with clients. They're like, oh, I sent it and then there was two more people. Oh, so I cloned it and sent it to that list again. I'm like, no, no. Send to more. Hidden away there, really handy feature. And if you want to watch how to do it, uh, Craig's created a YouTube video on how to do that, which is linked in the show notes or on our YouTube channel. All right, what's our thought of the week, Craig? Never use stock images again. Following on from before, I think, you know, this is not a HubSpot feature, but it's just a, an approach with MidJourney. We're creating all our images in MidJourney. I've got some examples of ones that we've been creating for some of the websites we look after. Just, they look so good. I mean, they're not, you can tell, like, if you really look, you can probably tell, but they've just got to the point where they're photorealistic. This one, if you're looking on YouTube, this is a, Picture we created mid journey of a professional woman in an office setting. Looks so real. I mean, look at her hair there. It's amazing. We've created ones. And and she's got <laughs> her hands look correct. There's a whole joke in mid journey around the five finger hand problem, like people having six fingers and all this kind of stuff. So bit of a joke. But yeah, conceptual stuff as well. Like we're just creating so many things. And so why am I saying all of this? Because most listeners are probably doing this, or if they're not already, they're getting started. It's this whole idea of creating stock images. And so what we're doing now is we're going through our website, Zen, and we're doing HubShots as well. And I just never want to see a stock image again. So well, there's every no reason image, to have a stock image, right, Craig? Yeah. Every image will be unique in the sense that we created it. So you won't see it anywhere else. And th- like that's the future. I think there is some gray areas around copyright and licensing that is probably going to play out later in the year. But at the moment, you know, we have a paid mid-journey account, so we actually have copyright ownership of those at the moment. So this, yeah, why? Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the thinking. Instead of, and for most most clients, they've probably got some stock image 
subscription somewhere and they're pulling out the same crappy images and you see them all over LinkedIn and Facebook time and time again. No, that's all going away. Just create your unique images. So, yeah, what a, as I said before, what a time to be alive, Ian. I love it. All right, on to our quote of the week. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. And this is from Benjamin Franklin. And I thought it was really good for this episode because we really want to involve others with our learning and so you can grow your knowledge with HubSpot. And grow your business in return. All right, we've got training of the week. Craig, what is it? Building a campaign from start to finish in HubSpot. This is a throwback to one of our earlier episodes where we walk you start to finish. Everything you need to do to create a campaign in HubSpot. And that's well worth revisiting and looking through. Because I know people are really tightening up at the moment. saying, oh, we just want to, we want to run the campaign. We want to measure it properly. Can you show us how to? Yep, it's all there. So go and revisit that. All right, and listeners, if you haven't already, you've probably heard me mention the HubShots framework. You can go to go to hubshots.com and download an A3 poster of the framework. Please print it out, uh, put it on your iPad, mark it up, uh, use it. Let it be an active working document in your HubSpot journey to understand where you're at and where you want to get to. Mentioning we released a new version since last episode. So if you do get it, sign up and then I'll send you a note every time we've got a new release. We've got a new one coming up early April. It's going to have a ton of extra information at the end of it. In the most recent one, we added color coding and things like that. So if your current version that you've got doesn't have color coding, make sure you download the latest one. All right. I'm going to ask you guys if you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. And if you would like to connect with Craig, sign up to the show notes because it comes from Craig. And if you reply to the email, he will reply back to you. So I encourage you to do that. If you do have any questions or suggestions about the show, please put it in the comments below or reply to the email that you get from the show notes and we will add it into the show. And as always, we would like, if you've got any questions, please send it through. We love listing questions that we can add to the show. And thank you to those who have actually given us questions already. Yeah, and can I make a request? Uh, we'd love you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment. Yes. Apparently it helps. Everyone keeps telling me leaving a comment or liking the show really helps with a uh, YouTube algorithm. That would be super useful. Thanks so much if you do that. Well, listeners, until next time, catch you later, Craig. Catch you later, Ian. Yeah.